Okay, class, today we'll use a simulink block diagram to simulate a two mass mechanical system as shown in the figure here. So, M1, M2 connected by K2 and B, while stiffness is a spring and the other one is damper. And then all of them then together connected to a wall by K1 spring. All right, so in last lecture, we have set up the equations by using Newton's second law, F equals MA. And then today we'll look at how to use the simulink block diagram to set up the, uh, the simulation. Okay, so the input, we have two scenarios, U, the input applied to M2, but had two scenarios. The first one is a constant force, 5 Newton. The second one is the input U is a unit impulse function. We'll look at how to simulate this. Okay, so let's first clear everything, and then I will launch Simulink. And I will create a black black model. And here I will use library browser. And the first one I will work on M1. For M1, remember that we have more that. Uh, we put a, the highest order, second order, on one side, and the other side will be the lower orders, and then that will be used to set up the backbone uh, for M1. For M1, we have input, for input, and the output will be the highest order, M1 x 1 dot dot. Okay, so use full screen. And then we'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so this is our backbone. So what we'll do is, and we know that there will be two negative terms and two positive terms for the lower orders, which will be the inputs. So we'll set up in this way. And then after that, I will connect to again because the output will be m1 times x dot dot. And then we'll through again. I will get rid of the, the mass term. So I will put y over m1 as a factor for the gain. So after that, it will become x dot dot. Right? And then we put, we place the integrator to get the first derivative. And then we put another integrator, we get x1 term. So, and then we'll show up, we'll show the result on scope. So we put a, also put a scope there. And now we'll, what I do is a connect oh, output, connect to integrator, second integrator, and go to output. Okay, so After that, I will we'll, we'll put the two negative terms to it. So the two negative terms is a y is a minus, if you look at it here, y is a minus k1 plus k2 times y1. Or oh, here we are using y as the displacement for m1, and then y2 as a displacement m2. So we have one negative term, a second negative term is minus b, y1 dot. Okay, so here we'll put two gains to get the coefficient. And we control R, control R. What I do is uh, we'll connect this to first derivative of y1, and then I will connect to the input. And here is the, damp the damping term, so which is B. Again, I put another gain, which will be K terms. Control R. Oops. Yep. And then I will put include this, put K1 plus K2 for the coefficient, for the multiplier, and then connect to y1, and then we'll do as an input. Okay, so I can label this to help you better understand that. So after this, what we have is m1y1, which is 
dot dot y1 and then after the game which is y over m1 so here what we have is ddy1 second derivative dd represent the second derivative then through a integrator so we'll have dy1 and through the second integrator we'll have y1 so and then y1 will be the output that's uh, uh, first backbone the second line will be m2 for m2 we still use the same thing we started with a sum operator so I get a sum and I will put a sum here at this time if you look at the second equation we will have five input so I will put minus minus is vertical to separate it and then I put one more plus into it so that what we have for M1 for M1 we'll do the similar thing uh, first I will move it downward leave some space all right okay so what I'll do is I'll do the similar thing as M1 Again, and then to integrator. Okay, so and then connect all of them. The first one will be one over m two to in order to get rid get rid of uh, the coefficient m two, and then through the first integrator we'll get dy two. Second integrator will get a y two. And after that, we will look at the result with the scope. Okay, again, we have two negative terms. So we'll put two gainers into it. Our two gains, let's put the gain operator into it. I put another one. Okay, and then control R, control R. This one I will rotate it. Use a control R. And this use B, and this one is K two. Okay, so and then connect to dy dy two. Connect as the input, and this connect to y two, and also connect as the input. All right, and then now we have these two lines but notice that for the input uh, for m1 we still need two inputs which is come from y2 and a y, y2 dot so what i will do is i connect this to this line and also connect to this to this line right and then similarly we need b2 for m2 we need bx1 as the input 2 so we have one more and then for m2 we need need one more input but this time is we need to generate a new signal what I'll use is to use again again and this time this is a uh, K2 R and then connect to Y1 and then connect to the M2 input and the last piece we have is so remember that for the input uh, of the force U we have two kind of scenarios for this problem the first one is we have a constant force apply to it so we will find the constant value well this problem is a 5 Newton so I will put 5 Newton into it and then connect to it uh, all right so we set up the block diagram and then next step is we input all the values 
So the values we have here is I'll open both of them. Move the up. Right. So for the value we have here is M1 equals 10 kilogram, M2 equals 5, and then B equals 10, K1 equals 40, K2 equals 20. Right, and then now we get all of them. We return back to our simulation. I will run the simulation. So after running, we should see the result here. Well, you see that one curve represents M1, another re represents M2. So, and I want to see that when it was st stabilized. So I will put more time. I mean, put 60 seconds and then write the simulation again. Okay, this is a, that's the problem, that's the solution. And then what we have here is, uh, we'll have y1 and y2 as a function of time. Okay, so now that's solve the problem A. For problem B, the input is not a constant value anymore. So we need to find, uh, define the uh, input, which is impulse value. So to do that, what you can do is, uh, I can use, here we can use, to define an impulse value, we can use uh, let me see the continue we use a source and we use a step input we'll use two step input to define a impulse value okay so what I do is uh, one input two input and then I will sum up two in step input use sum and for step value is like it's a go up and then by some value. So what I do is a step or step from zero and the final value I'll use a very big value. Let's see, I will use one thousand for the first step. At the first second step, I will the step time I will start from now zero and start start from a very small value, point zero zero one, and the final value is also one thousand. But this this time it will be negative. So. So you can imagine that if I add up these two values, what I have will be, let me put our output and look at what this value will look like. So if I write simulation, I said this stuff in time, very small time, because I said the step the difference between two steps is very small value. So if you look at that, what I have is just have a square signal, and then the ultimate value is 1,000, and the period, the time scap is uh, 0 0.001. Notice that there's uh, 10 to minus 3. So if you do the ca simple calculation, is the time gap times the initial value, 1,000, and if it equals one, this is a unit impulse uh, function. So as long as the time gaps are very, very small. Oh, if you use here, for example, if you use 10,000, and you should set that your time gap is 10 to minus four. Right, now once we get this value, I will delete this input, and I will connect this to here. And then I can run the simulation again, and then we can look at the result. Oh, by the way, before doing that, we want to set the stop time at, again, 60. And then run it again. And that's what we'll see. So no, also there's last piece of things. So for the simulation result, you notice that the curve is not very smooth. The way to get a smooth simulation is to set up the simulation time, go to modeling. 
and then model set settings model settings so by default is use automatic uh, variable step here you can use a fixed step to choose a very small value I would like to use uh, let's see use a fixed step again and I use I run a quota method and here expand solve details solver details and set a very small value so I will set as 0 0.02 second as a one time step and then click OK and then go back to the simulation and then write it again this time if you look at the scope and it will become more smooth okay that's all we have for today